Hey fam, welcome back to I Love Me Me Me. So I was reading an article in the Huffington Post and it was called What Divorced Men Wish They Had Done Differently in Their Marriages. Now there are eight of them and eight of them had um, different things that they would like to share on wish, what they would have done differently in their marriage and actually ultimately maybe, not 100%, but maybe held that marriage together. So I'm going to read them to you um, because I don't, I don't know the link. I'm not going to be able to link it down below. But that was the title of it. I guess if you can do like a, um, a Google search if you want to. What divorced men wish they'd done differently in their marriages. Again, this one was from the Huffington Post. So the first guy said that I wish I'd gone to bed at the same time as my wife. He also said that um, it creates a special type of closeness. They started sleeping separately. And um, but they, they were still having sex. They just started sleeping separately. She would go to bed hours before he would. But he wished he would have gone to bed with his wife because there is this special type of closeness that happens when you guys are in the bed. And it's basically like pillow talk and maybe hugging and kissing. And it's not just a in there for procreation or to fulfill a sexual need. It's just the intimacy that comes along with being in the bed with your spouse. And I've actually heard this multiple times um, from different people. And a lot of them are men, but from different people in general where... One party goes to bed earlier than the other and they just, they slowly but surely they start to live kind of separate lives now, you know, but there are people where this doesn't occur. So is this across the board? Of course not. But this particular guy, this was something that he wished he'd done more because maybe, just maybe the relationship could have been held together. The second guy said, I wish I could have mended the relationship while I still could. He said that he got complacent, distant, and he actually stopped caring. And I can see how that's a recipe for disaster. But he did have the opportunity to fix it, and he chose not to. That is a big thing for many of us because we don't think about us as making the choice. We only see that, oh, the relationship didn't work out. But what are you doing to make sure that the relationship works out. Now, I'm only talking about relationships where you actually need to be together because there are definitely relationships out there where we are trying to force and fit a piece of the puzzle into a part of it that just is not working out. And so we're trying to force feed or jam in this piece of the puzzle and it's not supposed to be together. So I'm not talking about those relationships. I am talking about the relationships where you, you guys might get divorced and it says irreconcilable differences. Something could have been fixed in those. It could have. But both parties have to want it. That's another thing that we don't think about. We think that just because we want to be in a relationship, our partner wants to be in a relationship with us just as much and sometimes that's just not the truth and so if and when somebody comes to you and tell you that they don't want this shit no more like my ex-husband did it was time for me to move on because if you don't want it and i'm the only one that want it it still ain't work out so you have to know if your relationship is worth fighting for Fight for it with the right person. If it's time to go, sis, go. If it's time to go, bruh, go. The third guy said, I wish I had spoken up more instead of bottling up my feelings. He also said whether it was something serious like moving in too early, he felt like he should have spoke up, but he didn't. Or eating her food that made him gag, but he didn't want to hurt her feelings. <laughs> that one I just thought was funny, but still. He just felt like he needed to speak up a lot more in his relationship and he didn't. And because he didn't, he started to resent and hold on to anger and have these ill feelings toward his girl and, uh, um, excuse me, his wife and things didn't work out. So like, I actually heard this plenty of times uh, where one party feels that they are pressured into moving in earlier than they want to. And they kind of succumb to that. And it, the, the resentment does come in. But sis, it was your fault. Bruh, it was your fault. Because just like you said, he kept his feelings bottled up. And they started to seep out in other ways. But it's all about communication. You have to open up your mouth and stand firm in what you believe in. And don't feel guilty about it. Because the other person is not in agreement with it. 
It's okay. We're not always going to agree with it. But if you guys are not truly on the same accord with one another when it comes to making decisions and you being able to speak up, there is a problem that you feel. There is a problem because you feel like you cannot speak up. Like Houston, slow down. Slow down. There is a problem. Because the person that you're wanting to spend the rest of your life with or be in a really long, long term relationship with them, you should be able to speak up about any and everything. That does not mean that both of you guys are going to agree with each other. But if you're not comfortable enough to know that your voice is important enough to speak out and for you to feel heard, that is a problem. And you should not be in that relationship. If you feel like you have to bite your tongue all the time or feel like you cannot speak up because it's always going to hurt their feelings. But what about your feelings? What about your feelings, bro? What about your feelings, sis? The next guy said, I wish I'd waited to get married. Um, he had some emotional baggage from his childhood that he never worked on. Y'all know how I've been talking about baggage. And he never dealt with that. And he had no idea what his true north was. So he got married just to get married. You know, it was the, it was the next step, right? Because they had been together for so long, it was the next step he had to get married, right? But he really wasn't ready for marriage because he had not dealt with his baggage from his childhood. I think he, if I remember correctly, it was something that his mom wasn't doing. He carried that over into every woman is in this one category. Instead of getting some help, talking to somebody, getting rid of those feelings and know that everybody is not the same. He went on ahead and got married anyway. So if you're feeling like you need to wait, wait. Simple as that. I know it doesn't seem simple because you're dealing with matters of the heart and your feelings, but not only your feelings, somebody else's feelings. But at the end of the day, if you want to not be a part of the statistic, then wait. And just as a side note, a lot of times if you are waiting, it's something that is holding you back from getting married, from proposing, from moving the relationship into girlfriend, boyfriend status. It's really because that relationship is not for you. I know that will sting a little bit. It's like, well, I have to think about it. Meanwhile, you're dating multiple people. You're not really thinking about this person. And if you're trying to choose between two, three, four different women, two, three, four different men, ain't none of them your choice. Mm -mm. because the person that's really going to be your choice, you're going to know that you cannot and you don't want to date anybody else. You don't want to be in anybody else's company. That is the only person that you want to be with, that you want to be around, that you want to get to know, that you want to start this and live out this life journey with. When they're gone from your presence, you're like super missing them. That's the person that you want to move the relationship forward with. It's not always going to be hunky-dory, right? But by and large, you guys are having more positive than negative moments. You're opening up. You're talking to one another. You're connecting. You're, you're being um, intimate. And I'm not necessarily talking about sexually, but you guys are being intimate, dealing with all of the matters that's in your mind. You can open up and share some of your horrible experiences with one another. And y'all truly connecting, y'all vibing. Y'all can talk about a variety of subjects. If you are religious, you guys are both doing the religious thing together. Whether it's going to church together, whether it's reading your Bible together, whether it's conversing, you guys are sharing messages with one another. That's the person that you need to be with. So if you're still trying to figure it out, you're on the fence with taking it to the next level, just stop. Move on because you're just wasting your time. That person is not your person. Anywho, move on. The next guy said that I wish I'd been honest about my personal fears and struggles. Um, he kept his fears bottled up and withdrew emotionally. Now, you can't withdraw emotionally if you want to keep the relationship together. If you're withdrawn for a period of time and then you're coming back around to discuss said emotions, that's one thing. But to completely take the emotional factor off the table does not work in the relationship. And keeping things bottled up, his fears, he kept his fears bottled up. Um, I'm sure it had to do with, with him feeling like he was being weak. 
you know, men don't do X, Y, and Z. And he was in that category. And that's just absolutely not true. If I'm with you, if you are my man, I need to have seen you cried before. Because best believe when it's my turn, you're going to see these tears. <laughs> I need to know that you got my back when I am looking my ugliest. When I got snot running down, you know, <laughs> when I'm doing all that. Or are you up and out the door because that's too much for you? I know you're not for me. You cannot keep your fears bottled up and all your emotional um, um, things bottled up within you because it starts to kill you from the inside out. You have to be able to release all of that stuff with your true partner. And if you're not feeling comfortable enough to release it, while they are around, another sign that they are not for you and you will be a part of the statistic. Yes, the divorce statistic. The next guy said that I wish I would have stood up for myself more. And this guy actually, in the beginning, he wasn't making as much money as his um, fiance girlfriend at the time. And then when they got married, he still wasn't making as much. But then when he did make more, he started to make more than his then than his then wife he never took back over the control when it came back to the finances and when he felt like he was speaking up more to try to do so his wife never did back down and so um she never did relinquish the control of the finances but he said that he felt like he set the standard in the beginning because he didn't feel worthy enough to speak up because he was not bringing the finances to the table that he felt that you know men being the provider and as I mentioned, as he, as I should say, as he mentioned, that did turn around once they get, did get married. But the wife, she already had her idea of what, where the money should be going and, you know, doing this and doing that. And he never got a chance to get the power back. But it all started in the beginning. And that is absolutely true. The way you start out something, that usually is the way that it is going to continue. So in this case... He never spoke up about because he actually didn't feel like the true man of the relationship because he wasn't bringing home the bacon, as they say, the whole money. The wife was. And so when he did finally bring home the bacon, per se, um, he didn't feel like he could take it back over because the wife just wasn't having it. By that time, it had been many, many years had gone, gone down with her being the primary and the person that did the financial stuff. And now here you come trying to take it back over when all along you guys should have been at least sharing it, talking about it, whatever. And then, you know, you can take it over at some time or maybe you can still continue to share. But he felt like he didn't have any way out. So he felt like he should have spoke up, spoke up more, but also spoke up earlier within the relationship. Number seven, I wish I truly listened to her because all she wanted was to be heard. Uh, the guy also said he tried to fix it. Avoid her hoping things would go away and he would get defensive. He didn't understand how his pride and inability to listen to her point of view cost them intimacy and trust. So he was always trying to fix things, but he really didn't want to listen at all anyway. Um, he was just trying to avoid her, like, let's get it over with. We're done talking about this. And he didn't realize how he was actually crushing their intimate portion and the trust within the relationship because she just didn't feel hurt. And so sometimes, men, we don't want you to fix our problems. We do want you to just sit there, whether you bore out of your diggity dog on mine, listen to what I have to say. But sometimes you have to listen. You got to listen. Because I want to feel heard just like you do. I want to feel love just like you do. Two-way street. The eighth and final man said, I wish I had taken responsibility for my part in our issues. He also said that he lacked self-awareness and poor communication skills. He never stopped to ask himself why he felt the way he did, why he said what he said, or why he did what he did. So, again, we always talk about how communication is key in the relationship, and you cannot say it enough. And I know that it sounds very trivial when we're always saying it or we take it for granted, but seriously, communication really is the key. You're not always going to like what your partner has to say. You're not always going to like what they're bringing to the forefront or, or, of the conversation. Sometimes you're just going to blatantly hate it and don't want to address it at all. But if you do that time and time again, 
that distance absolutely is created between the two of you. Like like the one guy said, the, uh, the, the trust was breaking down. The intimacy portion was breaking down. So just think about it in this terms. If I'm trying to talk to you about X, Y, and Z, and I always get shut down by you, or you never want to hear me, or you're always trying to nip the conversation in the bud, you have to realize that that is absolutely going to translate into the bedroom. If I don't feel heard, if I don't feel loved, if I don't feel honored, if I don't feel appreciated, and like my voice is worthy to be spoken enough for you to hear what I'm saying, why would I want to go and lie in the bed with you, give my body to you? It does not work that way. So family, this video was a bit different than the ones that I ever do, but I thought that this was very important because we never really hear what divorced men have to say. At least I don't, and especially seeing it written down. I thought that that was just something to come and bring to you guys. Let me know down in the comment section below. What did you think about the video? Because you know I love to continue the conversation. And um, definitely give me thumbs up if you enjoyed this video. And if you have been divorced yourself, specifically my men, can you resonate with some of the things that the guys were saying if you wish you would have stayed in that marriage? Of course, I want to hear what you guys have to say. I will see you in a future video. Two fingers salute.